please subscribe, like and share and press the bell icon to get notifications. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Rise Up. Today I am going to teach you the congruent triangles. This lesson is basically for the GCE all over the examination students and this lesson will help you to understand how to prove the congruency. Well, in this lesson I am going to teach you three basic things. How to recognize congruence of two plane figures. How to identify the necessary conditions of two triangles to be congruent. Finally, how to prove riders using the congruence of triangles. Yes, to recognize congruence of triangles, you need to know what are the plane figures. Plane figures are taught from your primary classes. Never mind, I'll tell you once again. Plane figures are made of straight lines and they are also known as rectilinear plane figures. When I take two plane figures and if they coincide, it is called congruence of triangles. Now in the first example, you can see that I have taken two triangles ABC. Both the triangles are right angled triangle and both the triangles are rectilinear plane figures because they are drawn with straight lines. So the first triangle ABC coincides exactly with the second triangle ABC. The second example, I have taken two rectangles. The first rectangle coincides with the second rectangle. So these shapes coincide each other. This is the basic that you have to know in congruency. Now let's move into the lesson. In this lesson, the main thing that you have to know are the four cases. SAS, AAS, SSS and RHS. Here, S stands for sides, A stands for angle, and R stands for the right angle, and H stands for the hypotenuse. From these four cases only, we have to prove the riders as well. These four cases are very important. Now let's talk about the first rule, side, angle, side rule. Okay, here, two triangles are congruent. If the two matching sides have equal lengths and the angle in between these two sides is the same. Understand it very well. When two matching sides have equal lengths and the angle in between these two sides is the same, then the two triangles are congruent under the case of SAS. See the diagram given below. The purple triangle and the pink triangle are having the same dimensions as 5 cm and 7 cm plus the 65 degrees angle. So if we label the sides as S and the angles as A, then the pattern as we trace around the triangles is said to be as side angle side O S A S. The second rule is A S A or else we can say it as AAS rule. Here, the two triangles are congruent. If the order of the AAS rule is not important, as long as the two angles are equal and one side is same. In other words, when two angles and a side are congruent, then the two triangles are said to be as congruent triangles based on the rule AAS. Let's look at the diagram given below. The both the dimensions of the triangles are 7 cm and 65 degrees, 40 degrees. So, when you place the red triangle on the green triangle, they coincide each other and they are said to be as congruent. So, this rule is known as the rule of AAS. A stands for angles and S stands for side. sides of these dimensions for example I say that 5 cm, 9 cm and 7 cm they can only be one specific shape and the shape of the triangles will be with the specific values and these triangles are said to be as congruent. 
Now the last rule, but not the least, R H S for right triangles. R stands for the right triangle, and H stands for the hypotenuse. S stands for the side. So, two right angled triangles are congruent if the hypotenuse and one matching side are equal in length, and they also have a 90 degree angle equal. In simple terms. When the hypotenuse and the sides are equal in dimensions with a 90 degree angle, the two triangles are said to be congruent under the rule of RHS. This RHS rule is applicable only for the right angled triangle. Here, the hypotenuse is the 10 millimeter length part. So the blue triangle and the green triangle both have the same dimensions with the 90 degree angle. Therefore, these triangles are congruent. So this rule works because of the Pythagoras for 90 degree triangles means that the missing side lengths are equal. So it is also a little bit similar to the SSS rule as well. Okay, right. Uh, so. Before we move into the main questions, let's see the basics. So, can you see have uh, kept here some triangles, and uh, I want to ask you whether these triangles are congruent, and if it is congruent, what is the case of congruency? Okay, now this triangle, it is a triangle with a uh, five centimeter, seven centimeter, and eight centimeter, and this triangle is also the same dimensions but uh, in different sides. This seven centimeter is here, but here the five centimeter is in this side, likewise. So. Uh, are these triangles congruent? Yes, it is congruent because if I place this triangle on top of this triangle, uh, I want this seven centimeter side to coincide with this seven centimeter side. So I'm going to coincide right like this. So it coincides. It coincides. So here, can you see now? I'm going to take it in this way to show you that same dimensions. Five centimeter correctly coincides with five centimeter. Seven centimeter coincides with seven centimeter, and eight centimeter coincides with eight centimeter. So these triangles are congruent. But when it was placed like this, we directly can't say that it is congruent because you might get confused that in this side, in this triangle, five centimeter is here. But in this triangle, five centimeter is here. But it doesn't matter. Suppose if you can coincide it in this way, that those triangles are congruent. So what is the case of congruency? The all the sides are equal in length, the five centimeter, five centimeter, seven centimeter, and seven centimeter, eight centimeter, and eight centimeter. So what is the case of congruency here? It is the case SSS because all three sides are equal. Now let's move into this pair. So this is something another speciality triangle. I have taught you. This is the fourth case we learned. So because this is a right triangle, angled triangle, right angled triangle. So this is called as the hypotenuse, and these are the other two sides. So are these two triangles congruent? Just have a look on that. Five centimeter, five centimeter. Both hypotenuse are five centimeter. Both bases are three centimeter, and both are right angled triangle. So are they congruent? Yes, they are congruent because if I place it like this to coincide this hypotenuse with the blue triangle hypotenuse, if I coincide like this, it it coincides. It coincides. Therefore, these triangles are congruent. Under which case? Under the case of RHS. Under the case of RHS. When it is kept like this, you directly can't say that it is congruent. But when you coincide it, you can see. So when you get questions in your exam, I know you can't take your triangle and with, uh, place it on the next triangle. But you have to have your imagination and try to place the opposite triangle with this. So this is the basic of congruency, coinciding. So now let's move into the main questions. Question number one. In the quadrilateral ABCD, the sides AB and BC are parallel and equal in length. Mark the data in the diagram and prove that Roman number one, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. Roman number two, AB equal BC. Roman number three, AB and BC are parallel to each other. The diagram is given below. 
okay i guess you can remember the question again i'll read that now this they say that uh, the summary of the question uh, a b c d it's a quadrilateral so the first mis mistake that you all do in your exam is when the uh, examiner has given you a diagram and when you move into the uh, when you're moving to your answer you what you do is you write a b c d something like that so don't get hurry because when we change the letters our full answer might get wrong so here they have marked a b c d in this way so this is a quadrilateral the question says and they say that the side a d the side a d and b c are parallel and equal in length so when they say like that the first thing you have to do is mark the data while you are reading the question mark the data side a b and b c are parallel in uh, parallel and equal in length so parallel how to put that mark this is the parallel mark so a d is parallel to which side b c it is parallel and they say it is also equal so equal i put like this okay now that data is marked now let's uh, the rest of the question is saying mark the data in the diagram okay we have marked it then prove that triangle abc congruent to triangle adc the roman number one says that we have to prove triangle abc is congruent to triangle a d c okay now here what is the triangle abc this portion this is triangle abc okay and we have to prove that it is congruent to triangle adc that is this triangle okay so um okay now we'll do that the first thing you have to do is you have to write in the triangle abc and adc okay we have, we have they have asked us to prove this these two triangles now so you have to write this sentence first then you have to write in those two triangles what are the common properties they said that they have given us two data ad is equal to bc so those belong to two different triangles so we write it ad equal to bc this is the first we need we need three properties to prove the congruency okay now one property is taken out the second hidden data they have given is they said us this ad is parallel to bc in grade 8 and 9 we learn that when the sides are parallel uh, there are three different angles forming that is the corresponding angle f letter alternate angle the z letter and allied angles c letter or u letter so here can you see the z letter i'll mark it with a different color so z letter is like this ad parallel to bc then the forming angle is here this angle and this angle so the hidden data is that so we can tell that the angle b a c d a c when you write angle you have to put this small accent here it is a must so this d a c is equal to which angle of the triangle a b c this angle so how to write angle a c b when you're writing angles you have to write this accent as well as you had it has to be a, a three letter a three letters yeah so then two day two properties are taken out so now the one property we need to prove that this is these two triangles are congruent so what is that property yes the third data is can you see this line ac is common to both the triangles abc and adc the line ac is common to both the triangles abc and adc so you can write it as ac is equal to ac so now you are confused what is this case yeah now first property see ad equal bc it is a side so right it is a side then 
DAC equal to ACB. What is that? It is an angle. So write A angle. Then AC is equal to AC. It is a common sign. Now write S. Now what is the case? You can write therefore triangle ABC is congruent. This is the mark of congruency. Is congruent to triangle ADC under the case of SAS. Did you understand? This is how you have to prove the congruency of two triangles. So this is the answer for the Roman number one of the question we talked. So let's now move into the second question. So before moving into the second question, just have a look on this diagram and the answers and check whether you understood it very well. Right. The next question, the Roman number two says that to prove that side AB is equal to side BC. How to do that? That is very simple. Roman number 2 says that to prove that AB is equal to BC. Okay, now we are going to do that. Answer for Roman number 2. We will write it here. How is that? Now we already know that the triangle ABC and triangle ADC are congruent. So in if, a, if two triangles are congruent, the corresponding sides of the triangles automatically become equal. So we can write that answer for this Roman number 2. Here Roman number 1 and now I am writing the answer for Roman number 2. Since triangle ABC congruent to triangle ADC, comma, AB is equal to DC. You have to write it like this, but you have to write the reason within the brackets. You will get a mark for that. What is the reason? You say like this because when two triangles are congruent, the corresponding sides, the corresponding sides. Are equal so that is the reason so very easy so that is the answer for the second part now let's move into the third Roman number okay the third Roman number says us that to prove that a B is parallel to B sorry a B is parallel to DC a B is parallel to DC they are asking to prove that this side and this sides are parallel okay it is also very easy uh, can you see that um, in this question they have given the first data for us that a d parallel and equal for b c see a d parallel to b c a d equal to b c therefore since a pair of a uh, pair of sides are parallel and equal this is a parallelogram so i'm writing the answer for third one a d they have given a d parallel to BC AD equal to BC then you can write since a pair of a pair of side is parallel a pair of side since a pair of side is parallel and equal we can say that AB parallel to DC okay so this is the answer for the third one automatically it gets parallel and equal because this is a parallelogram since the power of a side is parallel and equal this is a parallelogram you can write it uh, in the bracket you can write it is a parallelogram so that will be more clear to the examiner when it when he's marking always learn to write answers as you are trying to explain the lesson to the examiner so that will be even more clear but don't take much time to write the answers that will just waste your time try to write the answers in a uh, very so, uh, short way and a clear way to understand for the examiner i guess you have understand this lesson so uh, if I, I don't think i don't want to explain once again just uh, shortly i'll tell you this they are asking to prove us the congruence in the first part through that congruency they are asking us to prove that uh, prove the other opposite sides are equal then after that they are saying us to prove that the other pair of sides are parallel and finally what are they trying to say ABCD is a parallelogram 
can you understand so this is the basic of this uh, one of the basic part uh, that covers the uh, coalescent congruency so now let's uh, move into another question and see uh, whether you understood it uh, really question number two in the quadrilateral ABCD, the diagonal AC and BD bisect each other at O. Prove that Roman number 1, triangle AOD congruent to triangle BOC. Roman number 2, the lines AD and BC are parallel to each other. So this is the question given, no diagram provided. So we have to draw our own diagram and mark the data and solve the problem. Okay. Uh, this question is a little bit different from the first question because this question doesn't provide us a diagram uh, Many questions for your exam come without diagram and you have to be talented to do, construct the exact correct diagram uh, If your diagram is wrong, that will be a problem. Okay, now let's read the question once again I'll just remind you in the quadrilateral a b c d with the question start drawing your diagram Let's draw a quadrilateral a, B, C, D, but I'm not marking A, B, C, D because I don't know where A should come, where B, where C, where D have to come. So I'm continuing reading the question. In the quadrilateral A, B, C, D, the diagonals A, C and B, D. Okay, they're saying diagonal A, C and B, D. So A and C are diagonals. If A and C are diagonals, they should be in opposite sides. A should be here to become a diagonal if C have to come here. And but B, D is also diagonal. So B here here so then draw the diagonal okay now they're saying they bisect each other they cut off at one place and that place is named as O O now they're asking us to prove that the triangle AOD that means A O D this portion I'll color that with orange color the triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC triangle BOC this portion okay now you have to prove the congruency of these two triangles as I taught before what you have to do you have to write that this rule in the triangle in the triangle AOD and BOC triangle AOD and triangle BOC you're going to prove this only so what are the things now they have not given us any data they have just said they bisect you have to understand when two diagonals bisect each other the uh, diagonals become equal opposite diagonals they become equal okay right so you can tell that AO in the triangle AOD AO is equal to OC of the triangle BOC. So you can say AO is equal to OC. What is the proof here? That is because bisected. If it is bisected, we can say it like that. Then similarly, BO equal to OD. The same reason. Now we need another data. So what can we do for that? Mm, what can we do for that? Yes. When a, O and B, D are bisected, the vertically opposite angle, angle here and angle here get equal. So what are the angles? B, O, C equal to A, O, D. So you can say the reason vertically opposite angles. And the second part they say that to prove that the lines A, D and BC are parallel to each other. So can you see that we have told that um, AC and BD are bisected. So when the diagonals are bisected, it is becoming a parallelogram automatically. Therefore, we can say that for second part, we can say that since AC and BD bisected each other, bisected, so what happens? A, B, C, D, quadrilateral A, B, C, D becomes a parallelogram, becomes a parallelogram. So if it becomes a parallelogram, what can we say that? We can say, we can say that A, D is parallel to B, C. That is the thing we have to prove. And extra stuff I tell you, uh, A, B becomes parallel to D, C. 
and also we can say that AD becomes equal to BC AB becomes equal to DC all this happens because ABCD is a parallelogram so this is all what you have to know when you're doing this question for this question the main uh, the main points that you have to know are the properties of parallelogram and also the cases of congruence and I forgot to say here the case of congruency is uh, this is a side this is a side and this is an angle so what is the case S a s under the case of SAS the triangles are becoming congruent and remember to write the reasons as well okay so this is all of, of, about this question right the third question using the information in the diagram show that the triangle ADF is congruent to triangle DBE now observe the diagram very well right now let's see how to do the question now let's move to the third question I have drawn the diagram Okay, that says that using the information in the figure show that the triangle ADF, I'll cover that portion, ADF, this triangle ADF is congruent to triangle DBE, that means this triangle. Okay, now you should be, uh, it's easy to analyze with what are the two triangles we had to consider when doing this question. That is all, the question is very short. When the question is very short, it means the answering part is uh, totally in your hand okay so they ask you to prove the congruency that's all okay so first of all before we prove the congruence part you had right yeah in the triangle in the triangle ADF that triangle the two triangles what we are considering ADF and triangle BDE or as we can say DBE that's the way they have given the question DBE whatever so in this two in these two triangles what are the common properties already they have given one data what is it yes a d equal to can you see they have given that a d equal to b b so what is the reason what is the reason given or else you can write data whatever out of this one reason the second fact now is the problem okay there is any other data given no but can you see they have given several parallel marks here so as i told before when we are considering these parallel signs, always remember these parallel signs are given to show you that there is a hidden angle. Okay, what are the three angles I have taught you that are in parallel? I'll write it here. Okay, F letter is coming when these two sides are parallel, so these are equal. Then Z letter, when these are parallel, these become equal. Then the C letter or U letter. Angles are not equal, but the sum of the angle is 180. So in this case, I can see an Z letter here. Z. This is parallel to this. So it means this and this are getting parallel. So this is an Z letter. So I'll write here X, this angle as X. So if this is X, this should be equal to angle D, E, B. This is also X. So this is X and this is X. X. So both the angles are equal. So we'll write that. What is the angle? Uh, no, the triangle is not there. Okay, then another data we have A is since this is X, can you see this side is parallel? That means AC is parallel to DE. So if it is parallel, there should be an alternate angle here. Alternate angle is a letter. So this is equal to this. So if this is X, this also should be X. So I'm writing X here. Now all these three angles are X. How did I find that? These two are parallel. That means DF is parallel to BC, so I found an alternate angle. AC parallel to DE, so I found an alternate angle. So now we can write in the triangle ADF. In the triangle ADF, what is the angle? AFD. AFD. This angle is equal to the angle DEB of the triangle DBE. So this is equal to DEB. B. What is the reason? Alternate angles. You can write the reason as alternate angles. Clear? Right. Now what is the third fact? You have to find the third fact. 
third fact is again parallel only parallel lines only you have to use here mostly this question uh, this question in this question you have to you have to be able to find the angles because now see parallel sides are given so many parallel sides are given then you should be able to find surely out of these three angles only something is there so now i took alternate angle that's over through alternate angles only we found this uh, this data so now i'm trying to find another data now anyway these two are the triangles so now here this is equal to this equal these two are equal then surely what should be the next can you see the line the line bc is parallel to the line bf and therefore there is an f letter here there is an f letter this this is an f letter so that is a corresponding angle so in a corresponding angle this should be equal to here i'll put the letters y here y angle and here also y angle so those both y angles are present in both the triangles adf and dbe so i'm going to write the next data as angle adf adf angle adf is equal to which angle dbe dbe what is the reason corresponding angles corresponding corresponding means f letter so there is an f letter shaped angle now all three data are okay so it is the time to prove the congruency so this is a side a d d b it's a side so s a f d d e b angle here a d f d b again an angle so what is the case the case is a a s therefore you can say triangle a d f is congruent to triangle d b e so these two triangles are congruent under the case of a a s uh, so this question is a little bit complicated because the question has less data given but very easy question when you understand it you, uh, the hidden data is about the angles you should know these three angles is a compulsory corresponding angle alternate angle and allied angle in corresponding angle when two sides are parallel the angles become equal like this in alternate angle when two sides are parallel like this the opposite angles like this it become equal but in allied angle they are not angles are not equal but the sum of the angle should be 180 degree so this is all about this question okay so now already three questions are discussed and i'll be uploading some more questions in this in this video please try to do them alone and if you do them that's really good Uh, and this is all about congruency of triangles uh, you have to uh, be able to apply this congruency during the proofs that's all Thank you.